And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and this is episode 90 of the Wine Stream and of Drink with Rick. I'm glad you could join me, and uh, if you're joining me for the first time, this is a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have some show notes. They're right here. I don't always follow them, but I rely more on the chats. And we are live on four different chats here, so please join in because this show isn't about me. It's about the wine, somewhat, but this is really a show about us, you and me, together, getting together on a Saturday night, just kicking back and having a great time. You can drink wine. You know, this is a show about wine, but you don't have to be drinking wine. You can drink beer. You can drink your favorite alcoholic libation or non-alcoholic beverage, uh, water, if you want. It's okay. It's okay. As long as we're here and we're together and we're having a great time, that's what counts on Drink with Rick. So tonight we are going to open a an interesting Pinot Noir. We did one on Thanksgiving. If you watch the Thanksgiving special, we uh, did do a Pinot there, but we've got another one tonight. And this one should be really, really interesting. It was recommended to me by my good friends at Wine Store uh, at the local wine store in Blakeney, North Carolina. So uh, we'll open that up and we'll taste it, review it, we'll pair it with some food, and we will uh, also toast birthdays. We'll toast an anniversary, special anniversary I'm real excited about, and some national days, a few national days, a couple of national days actually. <laughs> and tonight is dad joke night. That's right, bring your best or your worst dad jokes into the chat and uh, we'll have We'll have a lot of fun with it. I have I have a few of my own. Yes, I do. I have a few of my own. Some of them are pretty bad, but <laughs> it should be fun nonetheless. And the mods in the chat will be serving as judges. So if you put in your dad jokes in the chat, best or worst, uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll give a prize out to whoever has the best or the worst dad joke. Uh, based on their recommendations, based on what they, they consider the best or the worst for the evening. So stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun. If you're joining me for the first time, join me on Facebook, on the Facebook uh, page, if Drink with Rick. You can join me on uh, YouTube. YouTube is Drink with Rick. Twitch is Drink with Rick 1. Drink with Rick, the number one. Uh, Twitter through Periscope is at Drink with Rick. And, of course, you can check it out the website. You can watch on the website at drinkwithrick.com. I don't have a chat going on the website, but if you click on the uh, episode that you're watching, the live episode on the site, uh, and you go to the actual episode page, there's a comment box down below, and you can comment, and I will respond in kind. So, also, uh, I almost forgot. The podcast version of this show goes up on Monday nights, every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Eastern. If you can't watch the show now uh, or you can't really watch, you can listen passively, that's okay. We have the podcast for that, too. So you can go to drinkwithrick.com or you can go visit Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, your favorite Android device, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, and the new podcast index site. And you can subscribe there and you'll get the latest episode as soon as it comes down. You can also subscribe by email. Just click on the button there uh, on that screen of uh, the email on subscribe page at uh, drinkwithrick.com. Go to the subscribe page, click subscribe by email, and you'll get the latest episode of Drink With Rick as soon as it drops right in your inbox. So there are a lot of different ways to, to hear the show. You can also hear it on your smart speaker. And if you want, you just say, hey, play Drink with Rick podcast and uh, should be able to play it. Okay, so here is what we're drinking tonight. We're drinking this. This is a Cambria. It is a, a Clone 4, a Palmer Clone 4, Pinot Noir, Santa Maria Valley, California wine. This is a 2015. And I was a little bit surprised to find out what the pricing was on this wine. I'm going to share it with you in just a few moments. But first, let's check the chats tonight. 
see who's in the chat. It's Barnstar is in the chat, and it's Barnstar. It's great to see you. He says, evening, Rick. Your wine sounds interesting. I've got some dad jokes in my holster, ready to fire. Nice to see you again. Well, it's great to see you here, and I'm looking forward to hearing your dad jokes and uh, and reading rereading them, actually, as, as you type them in the chat. I really appreciate you being here Thursday night. This past Thursday night, which was uh, Thanksgiving, we had our Thanksgiving special, and um, and you were there and it contributed quite a bit to it. And, and I really really appreciate that. And we all, I, I think we all had a great time there. We had a great time. The Eds were there, and uh, we we just had uh, we, we had a good time. And uh, I know I did. <laughs> I always have a good time doing this. I keep telling people, you know, I do this because it's for fun. And if I'm not making any money at it, trust me. <laughs> I'm spending money. I'm not making any money yet. But I, I tell you what, if, if would I like to be making money? Sure, that'd be great. Uh, not there yet. But it's, I, I tell myself, it's, you know, as, as long as it's fun, I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can. If it stops being fun or if I can't afford to do it anymore, period, then, uh, you know, that will, if it comes to that point, hopefully it won't come to that point. But as long as I'm having a good time I'm, and, and I can afford to do it, I'm just going to keep doing the show. Hopefully. So, uh, let's see. Nothing going on on Facebook right away, and uh, it's kind of quiet on YouTube. Uh, and, and Facebook, usually a lot of people start off uh, uh, trickling in after the last uh, 10 minutes, or excuse me, the first 10 minutes or so of the show. It's Barnstar says, that was a lot of fun on Thursday. Yeah, it was indeed. It was indeed. So, let's see what we got here. I've got, uh, okay, chat's quiet, so let's go ahead and get to opening up the wine. So here's what I have here. Once again, this is Cambria. It's a Palmer Clone 4 Pinot Noir. Uh, it's uh, grown, um, actually it's, it, the grapes are grown and it's vented and uh, bottled in Santa Maria Valley in California. So it should be a cool wine. I'm going to read the back label for a minute so, uh, so you can see what, what's, uh, what's in store here. It says, Cambria Seeds of Empowerment Initiate, oh, as CSE, Seeds of Empowerment, oh, Cambria Seeds of Empowerment Initiative. Okay, <laughs> it's all in caps. Cambria Seeds of Empowerment Initiative celebrates the warrior spirit in women. Each year, my sister and I recognize strong women evoking change in their communities. And it's by Julia and Katie Jackson. And uh, that's uh, cambriawines.com slash seeds of empowerment if you want to go visit the website. And there is 14.4% alcohol by volume, ABV, in this 750 milliliter bottle. Julia and Katie Jackson. Now, uh, yes, this is a, a, a wine. Uh, the grapes grown and bottled and vented uh, by, uh, by my woman. This is a woman uh, grown, you know, made wine. So it, it, that's very, very cool. I'm looking forward to, to trying this out. I'm really, uh, really looking forward to this. So let's check any, if anything else is going on on Facebook first. No, not really. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and open the wine. And I have my foil cutter here, my trusty foil cutter, which, you know, technically you don't really need always. You can always punch through it and get out. But I like to do this cleanly if at all possible. I always try to be clean about it. And uh, I prefer to cut the foil first before I put the corkscrew into the cork. And we'll get this wine open momentarily. I have to do it down here. There, oh, wow, that's a nice pop there. Should have been closer to the mic. That was a nice loud pop for all our ASMR friends. <laughs> All the fans of ASMR that want our big loud pop, that was it. Okay, I can uh, I can get a little bit uh, of the the uh, aroma coming from the bottle right away. I hope that's a good thing. Also, I I wanted to to before I forget, I want to make a note of this. What we're having tonight, we're going to pair it with some food. We're going to pair it with some. Uh, this is a uh, filet mignon that my wife Chi prepared. And some smoked turkey left over from Thanksgiving from Honey Baked Hand Company. There's uh, my wife made this really nice zucchini and um, and uh, onions to go with the steak. And uh, we have some crackers to clear the palate with, of course. And we have the Trader Joe's creamy gouda, some 
cheddar cheese, and we have a Colby Jack. We have a Colby Jack. So this should be pretty good. I think this should be a very good pairing because, as I said before, with Pinots in the past, Pinot Noirs tend to go with a wide variety of foods. This this should be pretty much within that safe zone for for uh, for this Pinot Noir. As Barnstar says, glad I wasn't wearing my headphones during that cork popping. <laughs> was it that loud? Was it really that loud? <laughs> I hope it didn't uh, crush the audio here too much. I, I won't know until I go back and, and uh, check it for the podcast version. But, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the wine for just a minute. We have... Uh, oh, yeah, we, uh, my trusty aerator. can't forget that. We're going to put together my trusty Veneto aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set, which you can actually purchase it from uh, Amazon.com. And if you click on the banner on my website at, at uh, drinkwithrick.com, uh, I may get a few cents from it. Maybe. We'll see. Haven't made any money yet. We'll see. And, of course, to hold... To contain the wine, I have my trusty Galway Genuine Irish Crystal Glass from Ireland. And this was given to me by my employers at buy2wayradios.com. So, let's go ahead and pour just a little bit of this wine. I'll pour just a little bit in there. And, well, yeah, it's, uh, it looks like it has a, a color of a pinot. It looks very similar to the Pinot that we had uh, Thursday night, that which was the the Han, the Han Pinot Noir. And this is a 2015. So um, we'll see how well this has has matured in this bottle. 2015. Looking forward to that. Let me check the uh, looks. Uh, and and Brew 243 is in the chat. Brew 243 is great to see you. He says, good evening, Rick, and good evening right back at you. Stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. And I hope you brought some dad jokes with you because we're going to do some dad jokes in a, in a little while. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. So uh, quiet on Facebook. And uh, let me go ahead and check on the uh, on the uh, some of the other, you know, kind of quiet everywhere else. But we've got some things going on Twitch. Okay, let me uh, give you some other info about this wine. I checked, uh, I w- went around on the wine.com website and uh, on a couple other web- websites, and they had some winemaker notes and, and, and some, uh, uh, I think they had a couple of ratings on this. But uh, it looks like it's fairly well received as a wine. Uh, I was looking at, uh, where was that? I was on Vivino, a 3.8 out of that of the vino but um, this is what I found out for price wise on this wine and it was um, Saratoga Wine Exchange in New York had it for $19.92 a bottle Plum Market in Michigan 1997 a bottle Rye Brook Wine and Spirit Shop in New York had it for $29.98 a bottle Whew, that's a little pricey and uh, Los Olivas Wine Merchant and Cafe in California, where this wine originates from, has it for $38. $38 even. Um, wow. I don't know if I would buy this for $38. First of all, I can't afford to buy a $38 wine, especially for this wine stream right now, because we're all on a budget. So I couldn't afford to to pay $38 a bottle uh, for this wine. That's pretty pricey, and that seems to be the most expensive I've seen it here. Even 1992, uh, 1997, it's uh, a little bit, uh, I don't know, these days, a little bit pricey for me, but trying to stick to below uh, that. But this is what I paid for. I'm looking at the receipt from Wine Store in Blakeney, North Carolina, and I paid for the Cambria Clone 4 Pinot, $12.99. $12.99. $12.99. $12.99. I have the receipt right here. So uh, I think um, that I think that was reasonable. Of course, I haven't tried the wine yet, so we don't know. <laughs> but uh, it sounds reasonable. It, it seems a lot more reasonable than $38. And that's the only way I was able to uh, to get this this wine out here tonight was uh, was at that price. Otherwise, uh, I... T- I don't know that I could do that. Uh, Nubatism's in the chat. It's great to see you, Nubatism. He says, hi, Rick, and, and right back at you. Hope you're having a great night. Tell me what you're drinking or tell me what you're 
uh, not drinking or what you'd like to see me drinking. And if I can afford a bottle of it, then uh, I'll see if I can get it and drink it too, as I often say. So let's check in the Facebook one more time. Very quiet on Facebook. That's very interesting. Very, very quiet. So um, unusual for Facebook. I think the whole weekend has been kind of uh, uh, quiet on Facebook for the most part. All right, so this is... Um, this is the wine. Let's go ahead and give it a little taste and see. Let me get back to where I should be here. Let me see what we got here. Okay. For, uh, all right. Oh, yeah, I can, I, I'm getting the aromas from here, actually. I don't have to stick my nose in the glass. And, uh, yeah, cherry and, um, and some strawberry. I like strawberry. It um, smells a little, little earthy. Smells a little oaky. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a taste. Okay. Yeah, definitely cherry and some strawberry. A lot of red fruit in here. It is oaky. It is oaky, and I'm getting. Let me try another taste of that. I think I'm getting a little hint of something else in there. What is that? Now, let's see. The, uh, oh. Maybe a hint of licorice. Maybe a little bit of hint of uh, licorice, but it is, it is earthy, and it's kind of medium. It's not... It's not a bold wine. It's not a light wine. It's sort of somewhere in between. Uh, it's not as light as this was, the, the Han. The Han was a little lighter than this. It's, I think it's a little bolder than the, the Han wine was, with the other Pinot we tried on Thursday. Um, it has a longer finish. It has a longer, and um, uh, it, it's, it's somewhat acidic. Uh, it's, it's a little... Uh, a little stronger in the acidity, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But it's not super. It's, uh, it's not super acidic, and it is. It is dry. It is very dry. But um, there seem to be not as not as many tannin in this wine. Not as much tannin in this wine. Yeah, it's a little light on the tannin. It is. Um, and it. It's a little bit. It is oaky. It is oaky. That's that's uh, uh, that's for sure. And uh, I did. I like licorice. That, by the way. I so I like the no, wines that have notes of licorice in it. I do like it. There's something else. I think it's a little smoky too. Let me see. A number of earthy notes in it. Maybe a hint of mushroom. Yeah. Okay. That's um. It's okay. I won't know really if I like this particular Pinot or not until I get down into the bottle. And uh, I, 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 right off the bat, right off the bat, I, I tend to favor that Han wine that we had the other night uh, over this one. But that doesn't mean this is bad. That doesn't mean this is a bad wine. It's just that comparing the two Pinots together, I kind of prefer the other Pinot more than this. But once again, this wine really hasn't had a chance to open up yet. I just poured it. Uh, we gave it a couple of minutes to, to breathe a little bit. But as we get down in the bottle, we'll let this wine open up a bit. And we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what my final summary is on it. We'll, we'll find out. In the meantime, we'll, we'll uh, taste it. We'll pair it with some foods and see how it does with the foods. It, it is okay. I think the... Uh, the acidity is a little is, is a little higher than it was there, so um, we'll see. It should go well with all these foods. Okay, uh, let's get get back to the chat for just a moment. Uh, it's Barnstar says I picked up a uh, I, oh I can't see the thing there. Okay, I picked up a red diamond 2015 Merlot yesterday, and it is surprisingly good. It's dry at first, then there's a sweet berry explosion after about seven to ten seconds. And, um, and he says, despite Paul Giamatti's uh, 
shunning Merlots in the film Sideways. I really enjoy that variety. Yeah, I like Merlots. I, I've always liked Merlots, and I didn't let a film like Sideways uh, sidetrack that interest. <laughs> uh, I'm starting off early on the dad jokes, huh? uh, on the puns. Uh, CM Sender's in the chat. She waves, and I wave right back. Hi, CM Sender. It's great to see you. And um, she says hello. Yeah, I, I uh, have always liked Merlots for a long, long time. Uh, I've liked Merlots. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a personal favorite. Merlots been a personal fav favorite of mine for a long, long time. Actually, I like them more than cabs. But as I've grown older, and I'm growing older, I've, I've found that I tend to sort of... Uh, gravitate a little bit more towards the Zins and the Pinot Noirs and the, um, <clears throat> I would like to say, uh, some of the Tempranillos. I don't know why. It just, I, I, that's just kind of how, how it is. We have a Tempranillo here. I still haven't opened yet. I should probably open it soon. Uh, we might do that in a future wine stream, maybe around, uh, around the end of the year. Let's see. Anubatism says cheers, and right back at you, Anubatism, cheers. Let's go ahead and, and pair it with some food, shall we? And I think that's a, a good taste. It is starting to open up just a little bit. I'm tasting more, um, hmm, let me try that again. I'm tasting something else in there. Maybe a hint of vanilla. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and try it. We're going to, first of all, we're going to try it with the no, I can hardly wait. I'm going to try it with my wife's wonderful, uh, this is a um, filet mignon. Wonderful. Great. I should be, good. be really good with this Pinot. Actually, it's a little on the cold side, to be fair now, because it's been sitting up here for a little while while I was doing my pre-show prep. Mm. But it's um, still very good. Very tender. Very nice. We had some of this for dinner. It was very good. It's the leftovers. Okay. Oh, wow. The smoky flavor in this wine, because I, I didn't mention that it was a little, there was a little smokiness to it, and some of the earthy flavors really accentuate the uh, grilled flavor of this, of this meat. And I'm going to try another one because I like that. When you have a wine with those kind of earthy flavors, a little higher acidity, and the uh, smokiness in it, some of the oakiness, they pair well with a lot of grilled meats, especially if you've grilled them over, you know, like a charcoal grill or something like that. And um, this is good. This is a good meat. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Mm, I like that. It's very, very nice. I didn't have any wine with my dinner night when I had this at dinner. I was saying, you know, I really wish I had some wine with this when I was enjoying the food. Because you, you can't really, come on, let's be honest. You can't really fully enjoy a, a, a meat, a steak, a good steak. And and look, we don't have filet mignon very often. Uh, I'm not sure what the occasion was except after Thanksgiving and my wife was saying, you know, we have some filet mignon, we haven't had it for a while, and just let's have a little filet mignon, and um, she did, she marinated it uh, this morning, and, and she really did it right, uh, and I was thinking to myself as I was eating it, well, this is wonderful, it's wonderful, I'd love to open up a bottle of wine with it, but the thing is, I knew I was going to be doing the wine stream, and I said, I, I can't, I, I'm saving the wine for the wine stream. I can't do that. I'm, I'm saving it for you, for my time with you, and that's what I'm doing. Am I being a little over melodramatic? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but honestly, I really did some, want some wine, but I said, no, I had to refrain from it because I, I'm going to be doing this tonight, and I, I don't really want to uh, start drinking wine too early. So that that's why I waited. But I tell you what, it was worth the wait. It's worth the wait. It's really, really good. Uh, let's uh, Let me clear the palate for just a minute, and then... Uh, we're going to try it with the smoked turkey from uh, from uh, Trader Joe's from uh, 
No, it's not from Trader Joe's. It's from Honey Baked Ham. And I love the smoked turkey. It's really, really good. And it is. And yes, there are leftovers too. They're all leftovers. Except the cheese. Um, I don't think they're leftovers. <laughs> Let me try this. Goes pretty well with this smoked turkey too. I'd say with the it does. I, don't know. Mm. I like it with smoke, uh, the smoked turkey. I'm gonna clear the palate one more time and check uh, Facebook, see who's in the chat on Facebook. Very quiet on Facebook. I hope folks on Facebook can see me. If you're on Facebook and you can see me, please give me a shout out in the chat because we've had a couple of issues the last couple of weeks with being able to stream on Facebook and um, it's been uh, has not been uh, been fun. I mean, trying to work out some of those issues. And I think one of those issues was was my fault, but uh, some of the others, they're just other glitches, and I, I don't know what is going on there. Now, I'm going to try this because pinots also go good with a lot of vegetables, as I mentioned Thursday night. And this is a zucchini. It is a, um, a grilled zucchini with, with uh, onions. So, oops. Not that one because I dropped it. We're gonna try. <laughs> We're gonna try this one, and it should be good. Very good. Mhm. Mm mm. It goes nice, and once again, I think it's the grilling part that really makes a lot of the difference. If it's grilled, it, it makes a huge difference. Get rid of that there for just a moment. Let's try it with some grilled onions and the zucchini. That should be interesting. Let's try it with that. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what. Better than yet, let's try it with the grilled onions and the steak. Steak and onions. Mm. Steak and grilled onions. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. I think that's that'd be a perfect combination, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Let's see here. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that very much. I like that very much. I should have had this. No, <laughs> I'm not doing that again. Uh, that was very good. I liked it, by the way. Let me clear the palette one more time. And we'll check the chat again. And... Um, Earthbase 2 is in the chat. It's great to see you, Earthbase 2. Good to see you. Th thanks for being here tonight. It says, uh, Merlot is great. The hate in Sideways is because of the character's personal life. As, yeah, that's true. That's true. And, um, <clears throat> and, and the thing is, though, and I, think, I don't know how much of that is real or if it's hype, but, you know, uh, as you know, a popular lore is that when the movie Sideways came out, and uh, because one of the characters didn't like Merlot, he really, really bashed it in a way. But uh, the the sale, they say the sales of Merlot just dropped. I mean, it dropped like a rock and, and they dipped for a long, long time, which I think is kind of silly, really. But um, and then it took a couple of years from them to bring the sales back up. I, once again, I don't know how much of that is is just hype uh, I, or lore uh, you know just myth i don't know how much of that is is real or not i have no idea but that's what i've heard right uh, as barnstar says uh, agreed the movie actually had a negative cultural impact on popularity of merlot wines exactly exactly earth base 2 says yeah it's kind of crazy when an impact uh, what an impact it had i, I agree i agree i i think it wasn't um and I don't think that it was intentional. I don't think they, they knew that was happening. I think it surprised uh, those the movie makers, the filmmakers, and, and those who were watching the, um, um, I mean, those who are, who are uh, making the movie and those who are in the movie as much as everybody else. Uh, they, they didn't, I don't think they really expected it. Um, yeah, I'm watching. I'm watching Twitch. I just lost my Twitch feed. I don't know why. Can everybody still see the Twitch feed? Uh, I don't know why it went down all of a sudden, but uh, it must be my browser. It says my browser encountered an error. Stream is good. Okay, so it must be my browser. My browser is not behaving. Uh, figures. Okay. Well, uh, nothing going on at 
uh, the chat on Facebook or anything else. Oh, she's in the chat on YouTube. She says hello. Hello to my lovely wife, Chi. And you did a fi fine job on this, by the way, so far. All right, uh, before I have any other technical glitches, let's get right to the to, to pairing it with the with the cheese. And the first cheese I'm gonna try pairing it with is the Colby Jack because I like a good Colby Jack cheese. And I think this will work well. This is a good cheese, by the way. Mm -hmm. I don't know what brand it is, but it is a good cheese. Let's try it. Yeah, it works well. I like it. I like it with the Colby. I'm going to clear the palate again. Try it with the cheddar. And the cheddar cracker combination goes really well, too, most of the time. But I'm just going to do this by itself for the time being. Cheddar. Try it with cheddar. It should be fine. This is a kind of a mild cheddar. Um, so it should be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once again, not bad with the cheddar. You know, I think it would work well with the medium cheddar. This might work well with sharp cheddar, too, even. Uh, I don't think it, it's that big of a deal. I think it, it pairs well with cheddar. Okay, plenty of palette one more time. Let's try it with the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda, which is one of my favorite cheeses and which we've never had a miss with in a wine pairing yet. In fact, it saved a couple of wines. All right. Mm, that's good. As usual, the double cream Gouda wins. Good pairing. So it works well with um, all a combination of all those foods. And that was not unexpected because Pinots do work pretty well with a lot of foods like that. And they'll go good with the... Uh, uh, oh, they'll go good, go good with uh, red meats, with uh, some white meats, some, you know, chicken, and uh, you got good rotisserie chicken, it'll be okay with that. It'll go good with a lot of veggies. It can go okay with a salad. You know, it's, it's just a wide range. Um, you could probably have it with some seafood, although I, 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 that would not be my first choice of a wine for a lot of seafood pairings. But if if the red is all you've got and it happens to be a pinot, then yeah, for some, seafood, not all, uh, but uh, there are certain things that you probably could pair it with. Although, once again, I, I would probably recommend a good white wine for those. All right, so that's got the, um, oh, and uh, Chris Montes is in the chat. Chris Montes, good to see you. He's in uh, the YouTube chat. He says, I know nothing about wine. I had red wine only. Nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. You know what? For many years, I could not even, I, I, I didn't want to even touch white wine, even though my, my dad made some white wines, and, and I would sip on that when he wasn't looking uh, when I was young. But uh, <clears throat> I, 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 it was not my favorite. I preferred the reds. And um, even over the rosés, I preferred uh, the really dry reds. And I still prefer dry reds over the rosés, although some of the uh, some of the whites have been growing on me a little bit. Um, I have to say that my wife had a really nice Zinfandel, a Zinfandel Blanc uh, from, it was a Biltmore wine, that she really likes that. She, she doesn't like the red. She, she only drinks the white. And um, she had one the other night, and I, and I had a taste of it, and I'll have to say it was, it was, it was nice, and it was not sweet, because I'm not a big fan of sweet wines. I like dry wines, but I'm, I really can't deal with sweet wines too much because they the sweet wines will give me a headache um so uh some people love sweet wines that's their thing but um uh, so uh chris montes what are you drinking so you had red wine only um or is that what you're drinking now and uh and what red wines do you prefer i'd like to know tell me and by the way stick around because we're going to be doing some dad jokes here tonight we're going to do a little bit of a dad joke contest uh, Earthbase 2 says, I guess it'd be down for sweet wine and creamy or blue cheese. Uh, I'm not a big cheese wine pairing person, despite loving both of them separately. Uh, you know, th there is a lot to be said for having wine with cheese. Help, not just for the digestion, but, uh, but it's, it's just, uh, you know, well, yeah, don't knock until you tried it. <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, but some people don't like it, and that's okay. 
Uh, it's Barnstar says the Trader Joe's Gouda has a 90-90 stream success rate thus far. Yes, yes, absolutely. I love sweet wines, and I'm not ashamed to say it. There's nothing wrong with liking sweet wines. Some people prefer sweet over red, and that's okay. That's quite okay. It's just my personal preferences for the dry wines. I have a problem with drinking wines that are really sweet. Unless it's a dessert wine, and then I'll just have a little bit, and I'm okay. But uh, other than that, Earth Base 2 says, uh, sweet wines rule. And, uh, I love sweet wines, and I'm not ashamed to say it, is what uh, Sparnstar says. Well, um, yeah, don't be ashamed. There's no shame in the wine you like. As I always say, everyone's palate is different. And just to reiterate something I've said before many times, just to let everyone know right up front, I am not a sommelier, okay? I am not a wine snob, or wine, uh, as they call wine snobs, wine aficionado. I am an everyman. I'm an everyman who likes to drink wine. And that's what 99.9% .9 of us out there are. Just, just, just normal people that like to drink wine. And some people know a little bit more wine about wine than others. Some people know nothing about wine. It's okay. But, um, you know, if, if it's what you like, it's a matter of what you like to drink and what tastes good to you. What, what wine is good to you. And... You know, I don't even knock some of the people that like to drink the, uh, well, let's say, uh, that's another wine in a different class by itself, if you could call it class. Uh, some of those, uh, the, the really, really, really low-end wines, but, but um, you know, two buck chucks and things like that. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not a wine snob. And look, there was a time when I drank a lot of two buck chuck because that's all I could afford. And uh, so it's, you know, it's barely drinkable, but uh, as my, my sister would say, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not something I'd want to drink every day, but uh, if I had to, I'd, 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 I'd drink those, but it's not because I'm being a wine snob, it's just that, that there are some things that don't taste good to me, you know, that, that taste good and that don't taste good to me. Then again, I don't go out and buy $50 wines either. And I've said this many times in the past for a couple of reasons. One, I can't afford them. And uh, two, I've had $50 wines before that. Now, I've had some that are good. I've had more expensive wines that are good, too. But I've had some before that were just not like, well, this is like a five ninety nine bottle of Barefoot or something. You know, the same thing. And there's a dirty little secret in the industry about that, that some of those wine blends that they sell, you know, from some, some of these uh, labels are actually the $50 wines that are pretty much rebottled, you know, the, the, the overstock on those wines that, that, that are bought out and reblended and things like that. And so you may actually be drinking a $50 bottle of wine in some of those blends and not even know it. Um, and you're getting it for 5 $6. That's one of the dirty little secrets about this business. So, um, look, I'm... I don't look at wine based on what it costs. I don't look at wine based on uh, what other people, professionals say, like Robert Parker, the, the guy who's the big, you know, one of the big wine gurus that pretty much all, you know, basically is, is, is uh, he's basically uh, labeled as the inventor of the, uh, the wine uh, rating system. That you see out there all the time, and um, just because he likes the wine, though, and just because he rates it highly, doesn't mean I'm going to like it or that I would rate it highly. Just as a, every person that drinks wine, you know, just a regular person, because even though some of these people are really, really trained, they have really trained and tested palates, and uh, that they go years and years training about wine. What it comes down to. What it, come, what it all comes down to at the end of the day is personal taste. It really does. It, it just comes down to personal taste. It's just like a movie critic. You know, I, I see so many movie critics. I remember the days of uh, uh, Ebert, Siskel and Ebert, Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel. And, uh, I, uh, you know, I'd listen to some of their reviews. And they would just trash on some movies that I really liked. And then they would really like movies that I thought were horrible <laughs> you know, and I didn't care for. And it's the same thing. It's a personal taste. And Chris Monte says, the older I get, I'm looking to start new hobbies. Wine might be it. Only know how to drink beer. <laughs> Look, 
there's nothing wrong with that. And we have opened up some beers in the past. We've had open beers uh, and tasted beers. As a matter of fact, if you go back and, and uh, it's September 29th, and my son Tommy and his birthday, we did a couple of specials. We did one where we laid out three bottles of wine, and he t- tasted wine for the first time, a red, rosé, and a white. Then the next night, we did it again, but we did it with three beers. And we did it with, uh, what we do? with a, we did it with a Pilsner. We did it with a, uh, uh, I'm trying to think what else we had there. Oh, they're behind me. They're, they're in the back behind me. Uh, there, was a, there was a hop, drop, and roll and a, and a, and a porter. And, a, and, and I mean, we did all th- three of those. And um, he tasted those. Now, right now, he tells me he prefers the beer over the wine. That's okay. That's okay with me. Doesn't he doesn't have to like the wine if he likes the beer? That's good. It's all good. And if you're drinking beer and you're watching this show, that's fine too. Because this is not. If you know, if you look at the title, look at the title. Drink with Rick. It doesn't say drink wine with Rick. Now I am holding you know, the, the image there is holding some wine, but it doesn't say drink wine with Rick. It says drink with Rick, which means you can drink whatever you want. It's all good. It's all good. So. So, and you know what? A good hobby to having some beer there, making beer. There's a hobby for you, Chris. Making beer. If you like beer, making uh, beer would be a good hobby. My boss and by two air radios, he does that as a hobby. He makes beer. He prefers beer over wine. He makes beer. It's not, it's great. And I've had his beer. It's really good. <laughs> I really enjoy it. So, um, Let's see. I'm going back here to the but uh, back to the chat here. Just a minute. Uh, Earthbase two says, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, Saturnus, Osius, Togachi, etc. Dessert wine, but it's good any time. Yes. Yeah. If you're spending more than thirty dollars, you do well to have a solid recommendation or know the winery. Yes, that's true. That's true. And and to be honest. You don't have to, in most cases, you don't have to spend $30. Go back and, and watch some of my uh, previous wine streams where I talk about that and talk about choosing wines for parties and get-togethers and, and, and family gatherings. And uh, I've said this many times that, uh, that there, you know, a, a good protocol for that is, uh, you know, get some recommendations, but uh, don't don't go overboard. You don't have to impress everybody saying that, oh, I've got a case of wine here, it's $30 a bottle. People are not really going to be impressed with that, at least not – you know, in the beginning they might be, but then when they taste the wine, I tell you what, it's the thirty. If it's a case of thirty dollar bottle of wine, it's all cork. They're not going to be impressed at all. But I tell you what, if it's a uh, twelve dollar bottle of wine, twelve dollars a bottle, or six dollars a bottle, or eight dollars a bottle, and it's really good wine, and they like it, um, they're not going to care. They're going to say, "Oh, this is great wine." And especially after they've had a few bottles, they're not going to care. <laughs> I can attest to that personally. Um, and Sparstar says, "Believe you." Uh, Earthbase 2, believe you, but it was the first wine set I've ever visited. Oh, Vivino isn't the best for ratings, in my opinion, uh, is what Earthbase 2 says. Vivino isn't the best for ratings. No, there's no, there's no rating site that, that's, that's perfect for that, that's the best for ratings. Because it would, the people who are rating are just other wine drinkers. They're just, you know, uh, on most of those sites, they're just other wine drinkers. And everybody, once again, everybody has their palate. Everybody has their personal taste. So, yeah, I don't necessarily trust ratings on wines per se. I just I mention them because, uh, because they're out there. Earthbase 2 says, the varieties and such are fascinating. I love learning about a new region or a varietal. And CM Sender says, it's about dad joke time, isn't it? <laughs> she wants to get right to the dad jokes. Yeah, but before we get there, before we get there, I have a few birthdays to toast. And you, as you know, what we do on the show is we do some birthday toast. I'll try to make this as... Uh, Try to go through this as smoothly as possible because I don't think any of our birthday people are in the Facebook chat tonight. So, uh, so I'll go through these pretty quick. So let me do the let's do the birthdays. I gotta have the fireworks. Okay, hopefully my computer won't crash. All right, first birthday is uh, birth, first birthday toast goes to Richard, my friend Richard. Um, Richard uh, leaps. Uh, bes- and boy, I've had uh, I haven't had enough of this yet, have I? <laughs> Sorry, Richard. This is my first toast goes to Richard Lee uh, Liebes Pack, and um, maybe I have had enough. I'm not. Am I down to? Oh, maybe not. Uh, Richard. Sorry, Richard. Richard or Rick uh, Liebes Pack. 
he is a fellow podcaster, a friend of mine, a fellow podcaster. He does a show called Self-Protection Essentials Podcast, and uh, he's been doing that for, for quite a while. Um, I haven't heard an episode of it uh, in, uh, lately, but uh, he is a, a podcaster, been co- podcasting for a little while. And uh, this is for you, Richard. Uh, your birthday is on the 29th, right? That's tomorrow, this Sunday. 29th, yes. 29th. And here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. I'm going to start mangling everything here in a few minutes if I keep going down this bottle. <laughs> All right. And uh, I've also got a birthday toast for my good friend Todd, Todd Hughes. Todd, uh, his, your birthday is also tomorrow, that's Sunday. And Todd uh, and I go way, way back to the days of Onforce. We were both IT people, and we were doing contract work with uh, Onforce, which used to be called ComputerRepair.com. Both regulars in the forums. We got to know each other there in the forums. And uh, then when I started the Force Field podcast, which was my second podcast that I did, that was back in 2006, um, he was a regular there, uh, listened to the show regularly. We started the Forest Field Forums, and he was one of the, the uh, admins in the forums. He was one of our forum admins. And Todd, a uh, great guy, a great guy, and, and really uh, just, just a cool guy all around. Anyway, Todd, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday to Todd Hughes. And may you have many, 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 many more. Uh, another person I want to toast is um, Benjamin, my friend Benjamin Straw, another fellow podcaster. Uh, Benjamin Straw has been podcasting for quite a while, and uh, um, I want to say happy birthday to you, Benjamin. Here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. Your birthday is Monday, right? 30th, Monday. Happy birthday. To Benjamin. Uh, also, I, there's one more birthday. Someone I haven't seen in years, but I've friend, been friends with him for years, and he was uh, the person who hired me at WFL. You know, I've, I've told a lot of stories about my days at Channel 35, WFL in Orlando, and when I worked there for 12 years, and just uh, the family that I had there, the second family that I had there, and um, uh, all people, really good people, and uh, it was Carl that uh, initially hired me for the job. And my first job there was as film editor. I was editing film. Back in the days when we were still running TV shows on 16-millimeter film on a film chain. And, uh, yeah, 16-millimeter film. And I was literally cutting, splicing film uh, and putting in the commercial breaks, taking out uh, chunks of film for time, you know, have to do some real editing for, for these TV shows and the movies. And, uh, it was my background in film previous, previously in film, uh, that, uh, because I've been a filmmaker as, as you've seen, if you've been watching the, the stream for a while, you've seen a couple of my films. I've, I've played a few of my films in, uh, in the past and, uh, live on the, uh, on the wine stream. And, uh, my experience as a film editor, editing on smaller formats like Super 8, he said, well, you can edit Super 8, you can edit 16, <laughs> which is fine with me. So he says, you're hired. And uh, and I think Carl, because Carl was really, the, he was the one who started me on that career in broadcasting. And uh, just a cool guy. Carl was just, uh, he's just a really cool guy. Anyway, Carl's birthday is, um, what is it, the first the first, right? Is that correct? Yes, it's the first. It's uh, December 1st, and that is Tuesday. And I want to say happy, happy birthday to you, Carl. Happy birthday to my good friend Carl Carden. And may you have many, many, many more. Okay, and um, I have um, an anniversary, a special anniversary for someone who is very special to, uh, special to us, to our family. And this would be... For Kathy and Mark Miller, Kathy and Mark, their anniversary, this is an anniversary, their anniversary is on the 28th, that's tomorrow, oh no, that's today, oh, today's their anniversary, and they've been married since 1986, so what is that, 36 years? Kathy and Mark Miller, uh, our neighbors and good friends, happy anniversary. And I'm going to toast you again just because I can. 
Kathy and Mark Miller, happy anniversary to you. And may you have many, 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 many more. All right, I think that does it for our, our uh, anniversaries and birthdays uh, for the time being. I do want to uh, briefly go over the national days because I, I want to mention a couple of national days that uh, – you know what? I have to pull up my national day calendar here because I, I didn't I didn't do that, did I? I didn't pull up the national day calendar. I was actually going to write them down because there are only a, a few of them, and I didn't do it. <laughs> so, uh, give me a moment. Let me pull up the national day calendar here. That uh, talk about not being prepared, huh? So uh, that's what's today. It's uh, November. It's November twenty eighth. 2020. And by the way, I'm going to nationaldaycalendar.com. Uh, my good friend Marlo Anderson is the CEO of nationaldaycalendar.com. This is where a lot of big news agencies and people, uh, uh, radio stations, TV stations, things like that, a lot of people pull their national days from. It's from nationaldaycalendar.com. And today is November 28th. Today, and I can tell you from memory, the first one from memory, uh, that I can tell you about because I said it to my wife as soon as as soon as we we got up this morning I said to my wife I said you know what today is she said what I said it is national french toast day and she looked at me like uh-huh so you're gonna make french toast this morning for breakfast and I'm thinking uh I think then I'm going to go back to bed. So, uh, no, it's National French Toast Day, but we didn't have any frozen, ready-made French toast sticks in the house, so we didn't make any French toast. Uh, we didn't have National French Toast Day, but it's National French Toast Day, and I like French toast. My daughter, Tia Sam Sender, she loves French toast. Here's a National French Toast Day. Also... I do want to make a mention, this is very, very important, because I work for a small business. It's a national small business, kind of international, because we sell radios all around the world. But uh, we, we are a small business. Today is, is, is Small Business Saturday. This is the first Saturday after Thanksgiving. This is Small Business Saturday. And what Small Business Saturday is, if you're not familiar with it, Small Business Saturday is when you are, are uh, encouraged to go buy and go do business and 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 bring your your businesses to or your business to a small business. In other words, whatever you need, you know, for your services, your products, whatever, patronize the small businesses. That was the word I was looking for. Patronize the small businesses in your area, in your local area, and and help them, especially during this time of COVID. During this time when when there's just Everybody's locked down, and, and, and uh, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are. And a lot of small businesses are really suffering. A lot of small businesses have literally gone out of business. And I mean, when I mean literally, I mean literally. They've been closing their doors. A lot of restaurants, a lot of, um, a lot of small retailers. But a lot of small businesses have been really, really hurting during this pandemic. And uh, it's, it's affected them more than big businesses. Now, it's affected the big businesses, and you hear stories about, you know, some of the big businesses going out of business and shutting down and filing for bankruptcy and, and stuff like that. But a lot of the big businesses, now, of course, the Walmarts are still doing business and the Targets and things like that. They're able to do it because they're big businesses and they've got some cash. They have something that they can, they can float, that they can, they can sustain themselves with um, through – you know, to, for a period of time at least, through uh, through hard times. But small business people, most small business people can't do that. They don't have that kind of leverage. They don't have that kind of cash that they can float. And, and it's been taking a lot of them out. So please, 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 uh, as, uh, as someone who works for a small business, uh, I, I would implore you, please, whenever you can, especially on Small Business Saturday, please uh, do your part to help support small businesses, especially small local businesses, and, and patronize them on Small Business Saturday. And I will definitely drink to that. It's just Small Business Saturday. 
There's one more day tomorrow. Is there's one day tomorrow that uh, is November? What is it? November 29th. That's Electronic Greetings Day. I don't know what that is really, except maybe you're greeting people electronically, email greetings, things like that. It's okay. Electronic Greetings Day. Okay, <laughs> that does it for the national days. We got through the national days. Once again, we're drinking this Cambria Pinot Noir. It's a clone for Pinot Noir. It's uh, Santa Maria Valley. This is woman owned, and um, and it, this I, I think if I think this is a really cool thing because I, I don't know if that many wineries that are women owned. And this is good. And it's actually a pretty decent wine so far. As I've gotten down to the bottle, it is a, a pretty decent wine. From Santa Maria Valley in California. So that's what, what I'm drinking tonight. And it's paired pretty well with all the foods that, uh, that I've gone with. So, so far, this wine has held its own. Especially for the price I paid for it, it's held its own pretty pretty well. Um, Let's get back to the chat here. Let's do, we're, we're going to start into some bad dad jokes. That's going to be a lot of fun, right? Um, let me catch up in the chat a little bit because I got off on a tangent here. Uh, let's see. Uh, CM Center says it's about dad joke time, isn't it? Yeah, just pretty much. It's about dad joke time. I was, uh, it's Barnstar says, I was just amazed that a single bottle of wine can go for over $8,000. Yes, it can, and for higher than that, believe it or not. Uh, Earthbase 2 says, ha, yeah, those are insane, not worth it, unless you have the cash to blow. Well, yeah, it's, it's, the thing is, those wines are really not for drinking, for the most part. They're really more for collecting. And there are people who are very, very serious wine collectors, and they have, I mean, there are wine collectors who have, you know, a million to two million uh, dollars worth of wine in their collections, uh, so to speak. They've got huge collections and these huge, uh, uh, you know, the sellers, wine sellers that they have. And uh, you know, that's great at all. I mean, wine collecting is a serious business in a serious hobby. Uh, it's not a hobby I can afford, that's for sure. <laughs> I've tried collecting wines, but let me tell you something. The, the wines that I've collected, and I, I've, yes, I have collected a few. Nothing that expensive, of course, but a few. And the thing in my problem with wine collecting, and I've told, I've, I've said this before, that with wine collecting for me is that I have a tendency to go in and say, you know, I need a bottle of wine. Oh, this is the only bottle of wine I have. This is the only Tempranillo or the only Merlot or something. I'm going to drink that and then say, oh, wait a minute. This is the wine I was saving that I was collecting. Ah, uh, yeah, but I like to drink this wine. So, And then when I'm done with it, I have all these regrets because, wait a minute, that was the wine I was saving. That was the wine I was collecting. Too late now. It's all gone, buddy. Um, I say to myself, and all I have left is the bottle, and I've collected some of those bottles. Some of them are down here, like this 40th anniversary Camus that was $100 a bottle and is now just a bottle. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's difficult. Collecting is difficult uh, in more ways than one. So it's Barnstar says, ooh, it's National French Toast Day today, my favorite breakfast. Yeah, I like it. And, and it's also CM Cinder. CM Cinder loves French toast. Uh, it's Barnstar says, I live in a smaller community with many independently owned stores, and I definitely notice their stress in the business community. I buy local as much as I can, I believe. Okay. And uh, and that's a good thing. I appreciate that. I, they all appreciate it. Everybody, trust me. Your local um, small business does appreciate that. Uh, let's see. It's a, you know I don't know what's going on with Facebook. Uh, Facebook is just a I don't know what what the deal is with Facebook. On to be honest, and I don't see anybody showing in the chat. I don't know if I think maybe maybe they blocked me. Maybe they don't like my wine streams and they blocked me. I don't know why. I don't talk about politics or religion or any of that stuff here, and we don't do that here. Uh, maybe I, I don't know what's going on with Facebook tonight. It's just weird stuff. Okay, uh, CM Sanders says, yeah, I love French toast. Well, it looks like Twitch is it for now. 
you know, with a little bit of YouTube, though, uh, here. Uh, Chris, if you're still uh, watching on YouTube, please uh, chime in. We're going to do some dad jokes here. It's going to be fun. Look, uh, bef just before we get to that, I want to let you know that to today, it was just such a nice day today. And I went outside. I, I, I took a cup of coffee outside. Yeah, I drink coffee, too. I took a cup of coffee outside, and... Um, it was so nice. I opened the door to let the dog out. And um, I, I looked outside. I walked outside, and it was just so beautiful. It was 66 degrees in Charlotte today outside, just perfect. And I, I was like, wow, this is so nice. I just decided to sit out there and enjoy it and um, enjoy the, the the view. I took a picture, too. I got a picture of it here, too. I took a picture. There's some trees outside my house. and I, That's really the only really good view I had, but... I was just staring up at the trees and just listening to the birds chirping and um, the squirrels chattering and uh, and the traffic going by because we're not too far from the road and, and a lot of traffic going on and some construction happening somewhere and somebody mowing their lawn or whatever it was they were doing. <laughs> but it was just so, so nice. It was such a beautiful day out there that I sat out there for a good... I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes, and just said, you know what? I don't want to go in and look at the computer. I don't want to do anything else. I just want to sit here, sit back, and just take it all in. Just enjoy it. Get my 15 minutes of vitamin D. Uh, just just sit back and, and just, just relax. And it was just so nice. It was really, really just a nice, nice day today. Um, I don't know how many of those uh, that, that we get too often, but I, I was just, I want to share that with you because it was just, it was so serene, so tranquil, except for the, for the uh, moments where they, the, uh, the big cars were, or the trucks were driving up the road. <laughs> but even so, you know, it was, it was all good. It's all good. As Barn Star says, that sounds great. You might need a Sunday morning stream now too, Mornings with Rick, in which you try new coffees. You know what? You must be reading my mind or something because I've actually, uh, I don't even go there. I did. I, I came up with an idea to do with Drink with Rick, the Sunday morning coffee edition. I did that. Okay. TM. <laughs> Trademark TM. Um, I, I came up with that idea some, some time back and I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to do just a, a morning coffee kind of show. Just sit back for half an hour, an hour or so. I'm still mulling it over. It's been something I've been thinking about for a while. But that's, uh, as Barnstar says, that sounds great. You might need to say, oh, oh, you just said that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> see, the, the wine started to kick in. Yeah, the coffee might be a better idea, actually, right? <laughs> it might be a better idea. All right, it looks like we're back up on uh, Facebook, such as it is. I think it's my browser doing this. It might be. Anyway, so... Without further ado, because I know that CM Cinder is chomping at the bit for this because she loves my dad jokes. Yeah. Um, we're going to do some, some we're going to have some fun with dad jokes. Timmy, give me your best dad jokes. I know people love that. Who doesn't like a good or bad dad joke? I mean, even when they're bad, sometimes they're really, really good, right? Right. So so you have them ready. It's Barnes that says he has some ready. Let's uh, Let's do some dad jokes. Um, and you know what, Sam Sender and Tom Antio, if he's in the chat coming up here, they'll uh, they'll judge it and see which is the worst and the best of of any uh, dad jokes that uh, anyone has contributed on any of the of uh, the platforms. Because I'm, I'm going to read them off of them all on, the, on YouTube. Chris, you got any dad jokes? Uh, bring them in. Anyone on Facebook? I don't know what's going on on Facebook to be honest. So um, let's go ahead with some dad jokes. Okay, I've got, um, as Barnstar says, I've got a 14.5% Merlot tonight, and I'm not used to that. Yeah, you know, that, that's kind of high. Merlots can get kind of high. They can get about 15%, 15.5%. I think the highest uh, I've seen on a Merlot is about 15.5%. This one's 14.5%, as I said. ABV, alcohol by volume. Uh, the one we had last week, I think it was about the same. We've had some that were considerably less. A lot of the... Um, organic wines are considerably less, and then they're really better for you. And, and to be honest, these these some of these uh, alcohol 
uh, this alcohol content is artificially pumped up and considerably higher than what's actually on the label. So you got to be careful about that sort of thing. Okay, it's Barnstar says, oh, I'll, okay, I'll start with the, the favorite I found. It's Barnstar says, first dad joke, dogs can't operate MRI machines, but cats scan. <laughs> I've heard that one before, but it's actually still pretty good. I like it. It's it's bad, but it's good. It's bad, but it's good. Okay, I'm going to give you some of mine. I'm going to. I've I've got a few written down here that I've, I've and I've pulled some I've pulled from websites and some I've kind of borrowed from from friends of mine. Like for instance, um, some of my favorite one one of my favorite dad joke people are is Jared Jared Easley who. Uh, is co-founder at uh, Podcast Movement. He often posts a lot of dad jokes and puns in, in his site, and, and they're they're always fun. I got a few of his here that he's put up, and Jared says, uh, one of them says, my buddy quit his job at the concrete plant. His job was getting harder and harder. But I'm bum <laughs> I don't have a, I, I tried to get some uh, sound effects in here, but I couldn't get them in in time. Uh, what do you call a woman who sets fire to all her bills? This is my favorite from Jared. What do you call a woman who sets fire to all her bills? Bernadette. <laughs> that, I like that. That was pretty good, actually. I like That was cool. Uh, he's got another one here. Fortune teller told me that in 12 years' time, I'd suffer terrible heartbreak. So to cheer myself up, I bought a puppy. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> that sounds kind of cruel. Isn't it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, let me check and see what uh, people are thinking about this. Uh, Tom Antio sends, uh, says 10 out of 10. Is that for it's Barnstar's joke or mine? <laughs> it wasn't really mine. It was really. Chris Monte said spring is here. I got so ex Oh, wait, wait. He's got it. Oh, Chris has one here. This is good. This is good. He says, uh, spring is here. I got so excited, I wet my pant plants. I almost ruined that for you, didn't I, Chris? I'm sorry. Spring is here. I got so excited, I wet my plants. I like that one. That's cool. That's that's a very good one. <laughs> Keep them coming. Keep them coming. You might win. You might win, Chris. You might win this one. Um, let's see. I got a few, uh, few of them up here. Another one from Jared, though. He says, uh, do they allow loud, oh, do they allow loud laughing in Hawaii or just a low ha? Okay, that was kind of bad. Here's another one. Oh, okay. You know, my wife asked me, why don't you treat me like you did when we f were first dating? I said, okay. So I took her to dinner and a movie and then dropped her off at her parents' house. Uh, let's see. Sim Center says, ooh, oop, chat messages aren't loading for me. Uh, I hope so. Okay, Barnstar says, second dad joke, what do you get if you put a duck in a cement mixer? Quacks in the pavement. Ooh. <laughs> Quacks in the pavement. Okay, I like that. That's good. That's good. That's good. Seam Center says, wait, I forgot you're not just reading from Twitch. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading from everywhere. I'm Twi I'm reading from YouTube and Twitch and Facebook if everybody uh if anybody shows up on Facebook, which is really weird, because normally I wonder if something's blocked in Facebook for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Uh let's let's let me check this real quick, because um uh, I think yeah. There's something yeah, something's going on there. Okay, let's go back. Seam Center says that's a fun pun. A fun pun. That's a fun pun there. Okay, I've got a few. I got a few of my own. And and some of these are some I made up, actually. Or I think I made up, but you know, sometimes you make up a joke and then you go back and you find it somewhere in the internet and it, it turns out that it's been out there for a while and it's just something really obvious, but I thought I made it up, right? Oh, uh, uh, Jared has one more. He says, uh, Lance, you know the name Lance is an uncommon name nowadays. 
But in medieval times, people were named Lance a lot. I <laughs> know uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's funny actually. He also says uh, Jared also says I took an airline company to court earlier this year after my luggage went missing. I lost the case. Okay. All right, I'm going to tell you some of mine, some of the ones that, that uh, and Tom Anthony says, these are new ones for me. <laughs> these are new ones for me. Uh, Chris, you got another one, right? Chris Montes, you've got another one there coming up, right? Okay, let me tell you some of mine. Oh, this is a real groaner. This is one of my kids have heard already. And I, because I liked it so much, I, I think I made it up. I came up with it uh, sometime back. Uh, and they've heard it before, so it's, it's going to be a groaner for them. What do you call a nanny with diarrhea? I'll let, you th I'll let you think about it for a moment. What do you call a nanny with diarrhea? Mary Poopins. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Super Center says, who, boy. Yeah, I know. How many times has she heard that? She says, I was about to say Lance is a cool name till the punchline hit. Oop. <laughs> it's Barnstar says, hey, take the credit until it can be proven otherwise. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm going to have a little bit more of this before I continue. Okay, I got I got some I'm really going to I'm, I'm really gonna lay on here. Some of these I made up, a couple of them I made up just today, I think. All right, here we go. I'm giving the people of Facebook a last chance to get in here. <laughs> I know there are people on Facebook that would love to, to get into this. If they were here. All right, so... As you recall, as most of you know who have been watching those stream, have been listening to the podcast for a long period of time, you know, I've had a number of different jobs in my life. You know, I've worked in a lot of different places, I've done a number of different things, a lot of fun stuff. You know, I worked at Disney World for, for many years. I, I worked in broadcasting for 14 years at two different radio, uh, t television stations. Um, I did some other things that weren't very memorable. I've worked in IT. I had an... I had my own computer store for for about uh, 12 years. What was it 14? I don't know. It's just uh, it all runs together. Um, and of course, currently I'm 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 the product manager of uh, at, at Buy Two Wear Radios. I've done a lot of different things. You know, I've done video, film, and uh, IT built computers. And been a system builder. I've done a lot of things. But there were a lot of different careers that I considered. And these are some of them. You know, I wanted to be a pilot. But that career just never took off. I wanted to be a plumber. But it was just a pipe dream. I wanted to be a lumberjack. But I just couldn't cut it. I guess I had an axe to grind. So I thought I would be a tree surgeon. But then I decided it'd be best to branch out and become a landscaper instead. But I just couldn't dig it because the work days were just too long. I wanted to be a psychiatrist, but my friends thought I was out of my mind. I wanted to be a locksmith, but that door just never opened for me. I guess I was just too keyed up. And I wanted to be a, an optometrist, but I just couldn't see myself doing it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing what I'm doing now. Uh, 
And those are some of my own personal made up jokes. <laughs> Sparnstar says, oh boy, going into full throttle bad dad joking. Ha ha ha, your delivery is just too good, Rick. Here's to, uh, here's to dad jokes. I love dad jokes and puns and things. That, as my kids will attest to, I love puns. I love uh, wordplay and I love dad jokes and things like that. Here are a few jokes I found on the internet, which I, I thought were, were pretty funny that I really enjoyed. Um, here's one. Today my son asked, can I have a bookmark? And I burst into tears. 21 years old, and he still doesn't know my name is Rick. <laughs> uh, my wife is really mad at the fact that I have no sense of direction. I got really upset about that. So I packed up my stuff and write. <laughs> I know that's pretty bad. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to skip a couple of these because they're really too bad. <laughs> I'm going to skip that one, too. Uh, let me try this one. I, I, I'm sure you've heard this one, right? Uh, I bought some shoes from a drug dealer. I don't know what he laced them with, but I was tripping all day. <laughs> I can't do that one straight. I really can't. But... Did you know that the first French fries weren't actually cooked in France? They were cooked in Greece. Okay. If a child refuses to sleep during nap time, are they guilty of resisting arrest? Uh, the Secret Service isn't allowed to yell, get down anymore, when the president is about to be attacked. Now they have to yell, Donald Duck. I didn't see that one coming. I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. What do you call someone with no body? Oh, I love this one. No, what do you call someone with no body and no nose? Nobody knows. <laughs> Sorry. I read that one first. I should have not read it. I should have just said it. <laughs> this is good. I ordered a chicken and egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. I'll let this again for a second. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> All right. Let's see if, if, if Chris is still with us here. Okay. Chris has got one here. What is the least spoken language in the world? Sign language. Uh, that's a look, that was a good one. Actually, I like that one. That was a good one. I actually enjoyed that one. That's a good one. Keep them coming, Chris. I like that one. Okay, what do we have? Uh, I lost my place here. Where was I? Oh, we were looking at some of the bad dad jokes. Am I getting some... Uh, things are kind of cutting out a little bit, aren't they? Oh, things are cutting out a little bit. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? It's cutting out a little bit for me. I don't know what's going on there. Let me switch over to uh, Facebook. Maybe I'm getting some better audio there. All right. It looks like uh, it's cutting out on me on, on the... Uh... All right. Can you guys see me okay? Can you hear me okay? It's just one of those days, I guess. Uh, with this, I've got to get a new computer, to be honest. That's not a joke. I, it's for, for real. i got to get myself a new computer. Okay, let's get back to the dad jokes. Let me cut out some of this stuff here. That uh, I've got some of these windows I've got open. There we go. That'll help. All right, my boss told me to have a good day, so I went home. <laughs> I like that one. 
I'm so good at sleeping, I can do it with my eyes closed. Okay, that that's just I, okay. Uh, that's just too bad. Uh, I tell dad jokes, but I have no kids. I'm a faux pa, p a pa. I think some of these you have to read to get the joke. Um, did I tell you the time I fell in love during a backflip? I was heels overhead. <laughs> I like this one. Okay. My dog, my uncle, my dog, my uncle named his dogs Rolex and Timex. They're his watch dogs. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's good though. But it's, it's bad. Uh, what is uh, some of these other ones we have here? Okay. We have, uh, I lost my other place here. Where is it? There we go. All right. A slice of apple pie is $2.50 in Jamaica and $3 in the Bahamas. These are the pie rates of the Caribbean. I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that. I actually, somebody posted that the other day on Facebook. I saw that. That's, that's kind of funny. Uh <laughs> My wife tried to unlatch our daughter's car seat with one hand and said, how do one-armed mothers do it? Without missing a beat, I replied, single-handedly. Actually, that makes sense. Uh, when a dad drives past a graveyard uh, and he says, did you know that's a popular cemetery? Yeah, people are trying to get in there. Well, that's an old one, right? That's an old one. I, the one I tell my kids all the time is every time we walk past a cemetery, when they were kids, I used to do this. We drive past a cemetery or something. We walk past one, and I'd point at it, and and, and, uh, and you know, one of my kids would say, well, "What's that?" And I said, "Well, that's that's a cemetery. That's where the dead people live." And uh, as they got older, they they realized just how dumb that was. <laughs> my friend says, uh, my friend keeps saying, "Cheer up, man. It could be worse. You could be stuck underground in a hole full of water." I know he means well. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> I like this one. Justice is a dish best served cold. If it were served warm, it would be just water. <laughs> okay, I'm laughing at my own dad jokes now. The latest, the fattest night in, uh, okay, I, I'm messing this one up. The fattest night in King Arthur's round table was circumference. He acquired his size from too much pie, as in P-I, pie. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. You had to read it. <laughs> had to be there. You had to read it. Um, <laughs> why can't you hear a pterodactyl go to the bathroom? Because the P is silent. I think that's another one you have to read to, get, to, to really uh, appreciate that one. Um, what does a zombie vegetarian eat? Okay, anybody else know this one? <laughs> what does a zombie vegetarian eat? Grains. Yeah, <laughs> grains. Uh, it's Martin Starr's, uh He's got a, a dad joke here. Fourth dad joke for all you Star Wars fans out there. How does Darth Vader like his toast? On the dark side. Actually, that makes sense. That that makes <laughs> that makes perfect sense on the dark side. Seems Sanders says you don't have to read it to enjoy the pterodactyl one as long as you know how to spell it. That's true, but uh, yeah, okay, well, I'm not going there. But <laughs> that's true. So Chris uh, Chris Monte say, and she says yes, we can hear you. Uh, that's good. I'm glad you can. Chris uh, Monte says, what do prisoners use to call each other? Cell phones. And he's got another one here. How do you make a Kleenex dance? Put a little boogie in it. <laughs> Good one. Good one. Hey, uh, CM Center, Tommy Anthony, are you writing these down? Are you getting all these? Because we, we've got to pick a winner here in a few minutes. We've got to pick a winner here. i got a few more here. i got a few more here. Uh <laughs> If you see a robbery in an Apple store, does that make you an eyewitness? 
I mean, it made me laugh, but it shouldn't have. It was just dumb. Uh, did you hear the news? FedEx and UPS are merging. They're going to go by the name Fed Up from now on. Oh, okay. Uh, don't trust Adams. They make up everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was, uh, my son was born, well, never mind, so when my son was young, I should say, he was, he was born and then he was young, um, I told my son once that I was named after Thomas Jefferson, and he said, but dad, your name is Rick, and I said, I know, but I was named after Thomas Jefferson, that was bad, yeah. And uh, yeah, a couple of these have uh, are overdone. <laughs> okay, I've, I've <laughs> and uh, what? <laughs> I'm not reading that one. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, what did the pirate say on his 80th birthday? I matey. <laughs> I matey. <laughs> That's what the pirate said on his 80th birthday. Aye, matey. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> what's the best part of living in Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. I like that. Um, <laughs> what do you call a dog that can do magic? A labracadabrador. Okay, five. <laughs> I've had too much of this, I guess. Five quarters of people admit that they're bad with fractions. Yeah. Why couldn't the bike stand up by itself? It was too tired. And what do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. Okay, I, I, I think. Okay, I. <laughs> I've heard a couple of these before. What time did the man go to the dentist? Tooth, tooth hurdy. Tooth hurdy. Um, okay, well, I've got, I've got, I'm going to read one more, and then I think we'll, we'll uh, and I'll read some more from you guys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to skip that one, too. Uh a termite walks into a bar and asks, is the bartender here? <laughs> Two guys walk into a bar. The third one ducks. That, that was a joke. I came up with a joke similar to that. And um, I forgot what. Oh, yeah. A tall guy walks into a bar. That's what I said. A tall guy walks into a bar. And that was, that was the joke. Okay. That's not even worth repeating, is it? And I just did it. Uh... <laughs> So, um, let me go back to the chat here just a minute. You don't have to, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, I also posted my third dad joke up there if you scroll up, Rick. Well, uh, let's see. It's Martin says, oh, when, when does a joke become a dad joke? When the punchline becomes apparent. That's a good one. That's a good one. I've heard it before, actually, but that's, it is a good one. Because when you're a dad and you're telling dad jokes all day, Eventually, all these things come, come around to you. You know, they, they do. They, and then you wind up making your own up. And then you think, oh, man, I'm so original. And then you go on the, up on the Internet and it's been sitting up there for four years. <laughs> That's what dad jokes are, right? So um, as Barnstar says, this segment has been a big hit. Live it to the dad to laugh the most. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Chris Monty uh, has one more here. He says... Uh, what do you call a lonely cheese? Uh, I don't know. What do you call lonely cheese? Uh, what do you call a lonely cheese? Um, let's see. I, I give up. I give up, Chris. What do you call a lonely cheese? Uh, <laughs> provolone. Why? 
That's good. I like that. Provolone. Oh, uh, you know, I should have gotten that joke. I should. I'm, I'm a big cheese person. I should have gotten the joke, but I was thinking of all these different cheeses, and I, I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me. That's good. I like that, Chris. I, I do. Thank you. That's that's excellent. So, folks, so we have a winner. Uh, let me ask the, because uh, it, it's about time to close up here. Tom Antio, Sim Center, do we have a winner? What do you think? Uh, who do we have a winner? I'll tell you what, the best and the worst. Give us a best, the best of the dad jokes and the worst of the dad jokes. What do you think? Um, and I'll tell you what, 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 you, what you're going to get, what you're going to get. <laughs> I don't know, this is bad. This is bad on its own. Uh, what you win, the best, the best dad joke and the worst dad joke. Once you win, 500 plus dad jokes. <laughs> it's a book. It's a book. And they're clean dad jokes and they're fun and some of them are corny, but they're 500 plus dad jokes. It is a physical book and I'll send one to you. Just uh, uh, we'll pick a winner here. Uh, Seam Cinder says, uh, oh, the Barnstar has one more. He says, fifth dad joke. There's been an explosion of the cheese factory in Paris. There's nothing left but debris. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I like that one too. I tell you what, uh, as Barnstar has one, let's see, Chris, do you have one more? I I, I think this this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, Seam Center says personally, I like the parent one the most. Okay, wait, who had the parent one? Who had the parent one? Uh, yeah, it was a parent. I think that was. Uh, who had the parent one? Oh, you've been, uh, let's see. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I liked, I'll tell you what I liked. I liked the uh, the Lonely Cheese because that caught me. That caught me. The Lonely Cheese one ca caught me. And uh, the Parent one. Which one's it with Parent one, CM Cinder? Who had that one? Um, okay, it's Barnstar. It's Barnstar had the Parent one. What do you think, Tom Antio? Who uh, who 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 wins? I, personally, I like the I, I like that one too. The parent one was good. Uh, Seam Center says not only is the punchline a parent, and not only is that a pun on a parent, but you're the punchline dad. LOL. <laughs> I guess I am. I guess I am. Touche. I'm seeing Senator. So uh, as Marcia says, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> okay, so who won? Who won here? Uh, okay, the the best and the worst. I'll tell you what I, I I liked I liked all these jokes I liked all these jokes and even the bad ones I really liked I kind of like that provolone joke I, I tell you what uh, guys what do you think you think um, I think we can send one to its barn star and to Chris Chris Monte how about that I'll tell you what each one of them each one of them gets a dad jokes 500 plus dad jokes book how about that I'll do it for both of you. It's Barnstar and Chris Montes. Um, I tell you what, each of you guys, go ahead and, and send me your email here at uh, rick at savoymedia.com. Just send me a shipping address. Uh, I, I promise no salesman will call. Nothing will happen. Just send me your a shipping address where, we can, where I can ship this to at rick at savoymedia.com down there. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll send each of you guys a book, 500 plus dad jokes. Each of you have won one, Chris. Monty's and um, it's Barnstar. Just just get one over to me and uh, yeah, Tom Antio. Everyone gets an eleven out of ten. Yes, yeah, I like that. That's very that was very good. Enjoyed it. So guys, uh, congratulations. I enjoyed. I've had a great time here doing this. We got to do. The, we have to do this again. We have to do this again. Um, uh, and and Facebook has been very very quiet today. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> Maybe I've been blocked on Facebook. I don't know. I'll tell you what, though. I, I to be honest with you, I, I um, a, a, a third of my audience is on Facebook, but I have been more and more under a little bit of an incentive to pretty much go Twitch. And, and, and as I mentioned before, the reason that I haven't, I've, I've uh, met the obligations uh, to become a Twitch affiliate. But um, and financially, I'm feeling a little bit too. Where I feel like you know, I really need to to have something coming in from some of this, even if it's not not much. Um, 
and I know that I could, that I could do, probably do well as a Twitch affiliate, but um, the reason that I have not become a Twitch affiliate at this point is solely because of one little stipulation uh, that Amazon has for Twitch affiliates, and that is that when you initially, uh, I'm not going to go too far into the weeds with this, but when you initially stream, you have to stream only on Twitch. And after the first 24 hours, then you can stream everywhere where else, which doesn't work for me because I do stream on four or five different platforms, and they're growing, and I can't just do Twitch alone and and not stream on the other platforms initially because this is the this isn't the Sunday night wine stream. It's not the Monday night wine stream. It's the Saturday night wine stream, and I stream on Saturday nights. And if I a third of my audience is on Facebook, and I know even if they're not in the chat, I know a lot of people are watching on Facebook, and I know there there are people watching on YouTube, uh, and sometimes they're watching in, in small groups. And so, if I neglect those people, if I just say I'm just going to go stream on Twitch for the first 24 hours and and block out the other three streams, um, that that's that's I think I'm doing a disservice to uh, to those people who expect me to be on on Saturday nights on those on those other platforms and I don't think it's it's not fair to them and I don't want to sell them out just because uh, you know I can be a a, a uh, an affiliate on Twitch and I, 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 that's just not what I want to do so I don't think it's fair I'm, I'm going to try to work with Amazon to see if maybe I get some kind of variance on that I don't know we'll see but for the, for the time being it is the way it is right now. So, um, and it's Barnstar says, I laughed so much tonight. I'm glad you did. I have a great time. And he says, uh, uh, it's Barnstar says, you'd be a big hit on Twitch, Mr. Rick. And I appreciate that. He says, I think it's worth it, but it's your call, sir. Yeah, I, I just don't want to, I don't want to uh, short out any of my family and friends and uh, long, long time friends. Uh, on Facebook or on YouTube, those who who um, who subscribe to me or who just watch me on YouTube, and uh, the same thing on Twitter. You know, I've had people on Twitter that watch sometimes, and I, I I just don't think it's fair to them to to do that at this point. So maybe no, maybe 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 Twitch will change their policy at some point. Maybe Amazon will, and and maybe maybe some point Jeff Bezos will say, you know. I've got five hundred billion dollars. I think that's enough money. Maybe let's cut this little little guy some slack. Nah. Yeah. Well, who knows? <laughs> Jeff Bezos doesn't strike me as a guy who who gives two two cents to 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 a little guy like me. So I I I, I don't think it's happening anytime soon. Anyway, so <laughs> that's just me. You never know. Miracles happen. Anyway, so I, I think it's time to close up things on the stream. Um, I want to appreciate you. Uh, every I, I do. I, I want to say I appreciate everyone for being here with me tonight. Once again, we've been drinking this Cambrio, uh, this Cambrio Clone Four Pinot Noir. It's actually a pretty good Pinot Noir. I'm you know I'm going to take one more swig of this and see what I think of it. Let me let me go back to close up here and we'll get. Uh, And now that it's opened up enough, I I, I would say that it's um, it's actually a little bit milder than I thought it was, a little bit silkier, not as much as that Han that we tried the other night. It's it's actually the Han, very nice, very silky, tannin and all that. This is a little bit not as easy to drink, but it's not bad. It's not a bad Pinot. I've had uh, it's actually a pretty decent Pinot. And it went well with all of everything we tried. It, it went well with the uh, with the uh, filet mignon, the smoked turkey, the cheeses, the vegetables. I think it went well with all of that. And I think this is a pretty good all-around Pinot. I don't want to give the, the folks there. This is what the wine looks like. Uh, J Julia and Katie Jackson. Kudos for that. They, they, I think they they have a very good solid wine here. Um, it's cherry. I take 
cherry, strawberry. It's kind of smoky. A very, it's, it's quite an earthy wine. It's not, not overly earthy, but it's a, 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 some earthiness. So a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of um, licorice in it. And at the very, you know what, um, let me try that again because I thought I tasted a little vanilla. I taste a little vanilla, but it's gone now. But I, I, I did test. There's, it's, it's a smoky wine. It's, it, I think, it goes really good with grilled meats. I think this is a good pairing for grilled meats. I like it. Um, and it's, it, it's somewhat acidic, not, not, not too much. But it, uh, and the tannin, the tannin's light on this. It's, it's pretty decent wine though. I like it. So that's my final review on it. And. Um, yeah, I did want to make a quick mention. I almost forgot about this. Did want to make a quick mention that uh, uh, winter's coming and uh, the weather radios. If you know that I sell weather radios, that's part of my job. By toyradios.com, get a weather radio. Please get an emergency kit together. Put together an emergency kit. You go to ready.gov. That's R-E-A-D-Y.gov. Put together an emergency kit so you're ready for any emergency, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, tsunamis, uh, uh, wherever you are, you know, and, and snowstorms. I mean, if you get close in a snowstorm, you lose power, ice storms, things like that. We don't know what kind of winter it's going to be, folks. But if uh, it, what you want to do is get yourself a weather radio and be prepared. Go to buy2wayradios.com. If you use the promo code WINESHOW. Use the promo code WINESHOW at buytoweirradios.com and check out. You can save 5% off your entire order. That's everything. Weather radios, FRS, GMRS radios, ham radios, whatever it is that, that, that you use uh, for radios, you can save. And, and accessories, too. You can save 5% off your order at buytoweirradios.com. And for full disclosure, I am the product manager for buy 2 Wear radios. I don't make any extra for this, okay? I just... It's just something that that uh, I give to you because I can, because you're a viewer and a listener of Drink with Rick. So once again, um, thank you for being here with me tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I had a lot of fun, and and I think everybody else did too. It's Barnstar says I'm by no means a wine connoisseur, but I was looking up aeration online earlier and learned that young red wines, one to seven years are best if they're open one to two hours prior to drinking, which I never even realized. Yet, I'd noticed that red wines would become smoother over the course of the evening. Now, to my chagrin, it all makes sense. And it does. Once the, you've got to give the wine a chance to open up and to breathe and to get that oxygen. It's, it's got to be oxygenated for it to really open up and for you to really appreciate the, uh, all the nuances of that wine. And a good wine is going to give you that. It's going to give you that uh, every time. And, uh, yeah, you, you know, we've done that before. We've, we, we had a decanter up here, and I decanted a wine that, that specifically the good folks at Wine Store said, you really need to decant this wine first for a while. So I did that, and that's how we opened the show. We opened the show with the wine already decanted, and it was very, very good. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's Barnstar says, thanks for inspiring me to look up wine info in order to understand it more. I actually have over the course of the past four weeks since I first arrived in your stream with that square guy. You know what? Um, and, and that's another thing I want to mention. That square guy, he's really awesome. I enjoy if, if those of you who don't know, check out that square guy. He, uh, he's on Twitch. He streams. He does some streaming. He, he's, uh, he's into um, Breath of the Wild, things like that, uh, Legend of Zelda. But he, the, the thing is that he does that, uh, that I really enjoy is the, the – and I enjoy all his streams, to be honest. We, we have a good time every time we go in there, my kids and I both. But uh, he does a Legos. He builds Legos, and he, the, the process is always fascinating to me. I love, I, I love that, enjoy it. And he and, um, and, his, and Darcy, his fiance, uh, they do cooking shows – and they do they do a lot of baking stuff, and that's always fun to watch. So I enjoy uh, that square guy, and I also uh, when I'm not streaming, I often uh, host their streams on my 
on my channel at Drink with Rick One on Twitch. So check that out. Check out the Square Guy if you get a chance. Really, really cool. Someone else who who may not be in here, maybe lurking, but she, she may not be in here tonight. It's Lynn Marley. Lynn Marley. Um, she is into Sims. And she does the Sims Four, and uh, she's been in the chat uh, a number of times. And uh, um, I enjoy Lynn Marley. She has, she's, she's uh, really, really nice, really sweet person. And uh, I enjoy uh, getting in the chat with her when I can. Sometimes I just lurk in there. I've been in there a few times. So I've lurked around, but uh, I was in there last night and I was, I said, eh, I just say hi. And so I did. And, and it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh, check that out if you're into to some of the Sims, if you're into the gaming and the Sims and things like that. My daughter Tia uh, likes the Sims. Uh, that uh, that's a fun thing to watch and, and get into. But uh, Lynn Marley does a fine job. And she's also into wine. Something about Lynn Marley is that she does a wine blog. And um, I know she started some time back, and uh, I, I, I don't know if she's still really keeping up with it right now, but I really encourage her to do that if she's listening because I think uh, she has a lot of potential there as a wine blogger. So uh, check out Lynn Marley's chat because I think that is uh, th that is well worth it. She, I think her wine blog has a lot of potential there. And uh, I'll just say, uh, Lynn Marley, if you're watching now, please keep that up. Keep that up. Do that. Do that. I, I, I like that. And I've liked what I've read so far on your blog. So uh, do it. I, I do encourage you to, to, to continue on with that. Uh, it's Barnstar says, I've been hanging out at uh, Sarah's painting streams, and I love her artwork. You too. Yes, uh, yes, she does. It, it, she's very soothing, very relaxing. It's very, she. you know, the thing is that with Bob Ross, Bob Ross had this really, and I like Bob Ross stuff because I host some of his stuff uh, when, I, when I'm not streaming on Twitch. And my whole family's like, uh, enjoyed watching uh, Bob Ross. And uh, which he's no longer with us anymore, of course, but uh, it's fun watching some of his paintings. And um, the thing is with Sarah's painting, she does much the same thing. So she, she'll often play some music in the background and things like that. And it's very, very relaxing. And she's very talented. She's very talented. I enjoy watching her uh, paint and uh, talk and just uh, really, really soothing. So it's very, very Bob Ross-like. In, in a sense. So I do enjoy that. Um, I'm glad you're watching it too. Um, so anyway, so that's all I got tonight. I want to thank everybody for being here with me tonight. I have gone away over tonight, haven't I? Yes, I have. Um, uh oh, Chris has another oh, No, he has another one. Oh, he says I have another one here. I had a dream that I was mu a muffler last night. I woke up exhausted. <laughs> That's good, Chris. Well, you've already won a book, so good. <laughs> send me your send me your uh, your uh, shipping address so I can ship you out a copy of that book. Okay, Chris. And I want to say thank you for being here with me in the chat tonight. It was a lot of fun. We had a great time. Uh, I hope you did too. I I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I want to thank, of course, my lovely wife Chi for being here. I want you, I want to thank Chris Montes for being in the chat. That uh, that was uh, great. And I want to thank everybody else who's joined us in the chat, of course. I want to thank It's Barn Star, of course, and Brew 243. Uh, the numbers are getting mixed up. You know, it's a little bit of much wine. Brew 243, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, Nubatism, thank you for being in the chat tonight. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, Earthbase 2, thank you for being here tonight. And um, it's Barnstar, of course, as always. Thank you for being here tonight. Did I miss anybody? I, and I want to make an apology. Two, two things I want to uh, make a couple of retractions on. Thursday night, I made a reference to the pilgrims, and I said that there were 200, of, oh, about almost 200 of them that crossed over with the Mayflower. That was an erroneous error. There were only 103 pilgrims that came over in the Mayflower, as I so I, I kind of overcounted, overestimated the number of pilgrims, 103, which makes the fact that there were only, what, 50 some odd pilgrims left for the Thanksgiving dinner, all that more dramatic, you know, <laughs> it really does. So, uh, 
But uh, that, that, that was uh, one retraction. The other one is that I saw Lynn Marley showed up. She showed up in the chat at the very end of the show, and I missed her. And I'm sorry, Lynn Marley, I want to apologize for that because I saw you come in right after I ended the show, and I'm thinking, well, she's been in the chat. And I wanted to give her a shout-out. But I did give her a shout-out tonight, so appreciate it. I want to thank everyone who had uh, birthdays tonight. I want to congratulate everybody who had birthdays. And also, once again, Kathy and Mark Miller, my friends, who uh, had their anniversary, who has their an uh, anniversary today. And, uh, what, 34 years? Congratulations. I'll toast you again. Anyway, I want to thank all of I want to thank you for being in the chat, all of you. You make the show. I appreciate each and every one of you here, as I do all the time. Um, I want to, I do want to, request I want to ask is you please do not drink and drive please do not drink and drive drink in the cover of your home your apartment whatever your dwelling is wherever you're staying tonight your hotel room whatever call an uber lyft cab or whatever if you need to designated driver friend family member whatever to get you home if you have to but if you can't just stay put please please do not drink and drive Please do not text and drive because that is a big, I, I have a, yeah, that's a big, yeah, don't, don't do that. It's, it's a big no-no with me. Because I want you to have a great week, but most of all, I want you to have a safe week. So you can enjoy me again here next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. And we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.